bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. A five alarm fire, five bells. Move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters! <laughs> Firefighters, the true-to-life story of America's unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the demon of fire. In just a minute, we'll take you to the home of young Tim Collins, rookie fireman, at a moment when it looks as if he's about to lay hands on the culprit who rang in the false alarm that nearly cost Tim his life when, you remember, Tim was thrown from the ladder truck and sent to the hospital with a broken arm. Evidence has just turned up right in the Collins' home. But first, here's something you'd like to know. Let's go, firefighters! Tim Collins, rookie fireman, has recovered from his broken arm and will soon be ready for service. Meanwhile, like every other man in the city fire department, he's looking for the owner of a certain red and green knit glove, the glove that was found under the firebox from which the mysterious culprit rang in the nearly fatal false alarm. To celebrate his recovery, Tim has invited his family, including brother Jimmy and sister Trudy, to go to the movies. As they prepare to leave the house, Mrs. Collins, Tim's mother, says to 14-year-old Jimmy, Better put your gloves on, Jimmy. It's pretty cold. Oh, he can't, Mommy. He lost them. I didn't either. Only lost one of them. See, here's the other one right here in my pocket. Jim, let me see that glove. What's the matter, son? Well, this glove of Jimmy's. Yes, it's for the right hand. In the night of the blizzard, somebody dropped a glove, a red and green knitted glove for the left hand under the box where he rang in that false alarm. Jimmy, what does this mean? Oh, Mom, I, I lost my glove. That's all it means. You lost your glove? Where? I I know, Tim. I know, Mommy. Why, he lost the... Don't you dare say a word. Keep still. They think I'd pull a false alarm. I don't care what they think. Oh, now, Jimmy, wait a minute. This is serious business. We don't want to think anything like that, but there's the evidence. If you can clear yourself... Look, just tell us where you lost that other glove. Oh, if I knew where it got lost, it wouldn't be lost, would it? Let me, Tim. Now, Jimmy, look at me. Yes, Mom? Jimmy... You're a truthful, helpful, honest boy. Oh. Yes, you are. And I'm going to ask you just one question, Jimmy. Do you know anything at all about that false alarm the night of the blizzard? No, Mom. Honest, I don't. Well, then. Tim? All right. I believe you, Jimmy. And, well, I, I won't even mention to Chief Cody that you have or had a glove like the one the arson squad is trying to trace. At least I won't mention it yet. Glory be, that's over. And now, Tim Collins, you invited us all to the movies. Are you going to take us, or are you not? All right, you, you folks go on into the lobby, Mom. I'll get our tickets. Come along, you two. We'll wait inside where it's warm. Uh, four seats, please, downstairs. Uh huh. Thank you, miss. Evening, Collins. Uh, who's that? Oh, hello, Chief Cody. <laughs> you didn't recognize me, huh? Oh, no, sir, not in civilian clothes. Well, say, if you're going inside, why don't you sit with us, Chief? I'd like to, son, but I'm on duty. Just doing a little plain clothes work. Oh, on that, that false alarm case? That's it. We tipped off the men on duty in theaters and other public places to keep an eye out for the mate to that red and green glove. You know, it doesn't seem likely the culprit would keep it when the pair's been broken. No, it's a thin chance, Collins. Yes, sir, unless... Chief Cody, if there's going to be a wave of false alarms... Right. One glove is enough to prevent fingerprints when the rascal pulls another box. Now we'll wait right here till Tim gets the tickets. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Cassidy. There's Mrs. Cassidy. She has a recipe I want. Look, Jimmy, Trudy, you stand here and watch for Tim. Hi. Oh, Mrs. Cassidy, before you go in, I'd like to... Jimmy. Huh? Jimmy, why don't you let me tell them where you lost your glove? So they can be sure you weren't mixed up in that false alarm. Don't you dare. If anybody tells, it's got to be me. Besides, I don't know where I lost it. All I know is how. Besides, plenty of kids wear gloves just like mine. 
I bet they lose them all the time. Huh? Where'd you ever see anybody wearing gloves like that? I forget, but I did so see somebody. I bet I'll remember who in a minute. Hey, look at Jimmy Collins. <laughs> look at Jimmy out with his kid sister. Yeah, Jimmy's gonna take his kid sister to the movies. You watch yourself, Droopy, and never mind that fresh talk about my sister. Silly old thing. Always pushing in where you're not welcome. Oh, hey, you don't have to get sore. Can't you take a joke? All right, but watch yourself. Hey, look, some movie tonight, huh? Yep, there's a big fire in the main feature. That's why we came. It's all about firemen. Me too. I've seen it twice before. Oh, boy, when the fire trucks come screeching up the street, clang, 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 and the people all screaming and yelling. <laughs> That's what I like. When they're yelling for help and they got the livers and lights get out of it. Oh, minute. hush, you're making so much noise. Everybody's looking at us. Yeah, well, there'll be more noise than that when the special attraction begins. You'll be screaming and yelling same as the rest. <laughs> special attraction. That's good. Oh, that droopy Dolan gives me the creep. Hey, kids, well, where's Mom? Oh, oh, there she is with Mrs. Cassidy. Hello, Mrs. Cassidy. Uh, come on, kids. Let's pick up Mom and go get our seats. I was delayed talking to Chief Cody out at the ticket office. Well, now, motorists, here's a special idea for you. Long distance touring... Jimmy, stop wiggling around. Studios. Yes, Mom. Travelers in strange cities... Trudy, make the I just thought of something. What? I remember who had gloves just like mine. <gasps> but if I tell Tim, maybe you'll think I'm making it up. Oh! <gasps> Shh, don't say anything, but maybe Chief Cody should know. But Tim saw him at the ticket window just now. Hey, what's the matter with you two? Can't you keep still and watch the picture? I'm thirsty. Well, go get a drink then. And you better hurry or you'll miss the part in the picture where the fire starts. All right, Tim. Let me, uh, excuse me, Mom. And now here's a very special safety idea for you. Here's something I know about. Now, here's a very special safety idea for you. Chief Cody, could I see you a minute? Well, well, Jimmy Collins. Chief Cody... I knew somebody who has, who had a pair of gloves like the ones you're looking for. What's that? Well, who is it, son? It's, it's a fellow that goes to Northside School with Trudy and me. He, golly gosh, Chief Cody, I don't want to be a squealer. I understand, Jimmy, but this isn't squealing. This is detective work. Well, it's, if somebody goes around pulling false alarms, he's got to be stopped. And if I know something about the case, I guess, maybe it's a kind of duty to tell. It is your duty, son. It's your duty to help protect your neighbors and your own family, too. You understand what I mean? Yes, sir, I do. Well, tonight, when Mom left Trudy and me waiting right over there, I was just trying to remember where I saw a pair of gloves like that, and... Golly, what's that? Oh, just the movie, son. That's the big fire scene in the picture. All right, go ahead now. Oh, I'm going to miss it. Oh, never mind. Well, the fellow I was trying to remember walked right up to Trudy and me, and he said... Fire! Fire! Run for your lives! That didn't sound like a movie, Chief Cody. Hold it a minute, Jimmy. Fire! The theater's burning! Run! Everybody run! You're right, Jimmy. That's some maniac spreading a panic. Everybody run! Jimmy, there's the manager's office there behind that door. Now get inside that office and wait until I come for you. I'll be back as soon as I can. Some fool back there is hysterical. These people, Tim, if they lose their heads and start rushing for the exit. Yeah, someone's going to get hurt. Mom, you and Trudy stay here. Don't leave your seats until the aisles are clear. All right. Run, everybody run. Well, here comes trouble, Mom. Let me out the aisle. Run for your lives. I'm... I got you. Hey, let go. Run. Everybody run. Stop that yelling. You're starting a panic. Lights. Turn on the house lights. Let go. You let me go. I'll let you go when I find it. Hey, hey, come back here. Let me go. Let me go. I got you. Now, he's this up there. Want... He's up. Uh, this is Chief Cody. Oh, oh, sorry, sir. I was trying to... Well, this is Tim Collins, Chief. Oh, good. Just the man I want. We've got to calm these people down. Where'd the fire start, Chief? There's no fire. No fire at all. What? Just some lunatic driving the audience wild with fright. Oh, Chief, I had my hands on him. He broke away. Never mind that. We'll get him in time. Now, Collins... You get up on that stage. Tell these people there's no danger before they kill themselves jamming the exit. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. All right, let me through. All right, fire department, mister. Let me by. All right, now, take your seats. There's no danger. There's no fire. Now, take your seats, please. Oh, great Scott, another false alarm. That fiend has fouled up half the fire department with another false alarm. Now, 
there's a case of one person playing a cruel practical joke, threatening the lives of hundreds of innocent people in a theater audience. But Tim Collins and Chief Cody are on the spot. Jimmy Collins, Tim's younger brother, has remembered where he saw a pair of red and green knit gloves, like the one the arson squad is trying to trace, and the case is rushing toward its climax. For what happens next, listen to our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will tell you boys and girls how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message you don't want to miss. And now, Chief Bob Cody, with a special assignment for all junior firefighters. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is Chief Cody calling you to attention for your special assignment. Attention, firefighters. You are to take special precautions next time you go to the movies or any place where crowds assemble. Make special note of the emergency exits. Make a plan in your own mind of how you would walk to safety and lead others in case of fire. And boys and girls, promise me this. If you are ever in such a place when fire breaks out, keep your heads. Keep cool and walk. Do not run. Oh, I repeat, do not run. Walk to the nearest exit. That's all. Goodbye for now, and you'll be hearing from me soon. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back at the same time on the same station when you hear... That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Firefighters. Firefighters is written by Frank Jones and is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.